Now that we've set up our app for use with iCloud, let's have a look at how to implement iCloud key value storage. So first of all, the good news. It is the easiest iCloud technology to implement out of all three we're looking at today. It works reliably since iOS 5, so if you want to support older devices, I strongly recommend you look into key value storage because it just works like iCloud is supposed to. Key value storage is also a great starting point for iCloud development, so if you haven't done anything with iCloud, look into this first. It's, uh, it's really easy to do. There is one downside, and I thought I'd mention that up front here. iCloud key value storage is limited to one megabyte per app, or 1,024 key value pairs per app. So whichever capacity is exceeded first, you'll get a warning and further data is not being saved. It's not much of a problem if all you're doing is saving high scores or application states or um, anything the user would want to sync across their, all their devices if it is an NS string, uh, an NS date, NS numbers, NS data even, if it's uh, smaller than one megabyte. So the, all the usual NS suspects, you know, NS array, NS dictionary, and it works a little bit like user default. So the class we're going to use to implement this is called NS Ubiquitous Key Value Store. And it works very much like the NS user default. So if you have experience with that already, you'll feel very much at home with the NS Ubiquitous Key Value Store. If data has changed in iCloud, your app wants to react to it, you can subscribe to a notification, a rather long one. It's called the NS Ubiquitous Key Value Store Did Change Externally Notification. And that lets you, as soon as that fires, it lets you update your app or your user interface, whatever you need to do with the new data. So let's have a look at how this works in code. I'm going to demonstrate saving and loading data with a string and a date. So let's head over to our storyboard and drag a couple of elements in here. First of all, a text field. And we're going to add a button that lets us save the data to iCloud. I'm also going to add a date picker. Somewhere on the bottom here. There we go. So whatever date we dial in there, whatever text we type in here, as soon as we hit the button, that data goes and gets saved in iCloud. Well, there's one other thing I want to do, the text fields delegate. I'm going to connect that to my view controller so that as soon as we hit return, that keyboard can be dismissed. Quick hookup action here. Text field, I'm going to call it just text field. Date picker, same thing, I'm going to just call that date picker. And the button will be one action. I'll put that underneath my properties here. And I'm going to call it Save Data. Very good. Come out of my Assistant Editor. And I'm going back into my View Controller. So the first thing I want to do here, aside from making the screen a bit bigger, is to conform the right way to the UI Text Fields Delegate. There. I won't do anything in view did load or did receive memory warning right now. But underneath here, I'm going to give it a pragma mark. That text field should return. So text field resign first responder and return yes. Perfect. If we hit return on the text field, text field goes away. Let's forget about this. Let's get to the interesting part about saving data in iCloud. So what we'll do here is we'll grab a reference to our NS Ubiquitous Key Value Store singleton class. So if you've ever worked with NS user defaults, this is almost the same setup we do here. It's a singleton class and we just grab a reference to it. Next, let's call a method on our Cloud Store and set our object of self text field text, our string value for the text, for a key that we're going to call the text. And we do the same for the date. So There. 
So that sets those values, but it's not quite saved them, so we need to, much like on the user defaults, also call Cloud Store Synchronize. And that'll return a bool if you want to test that if it was successful or not. We just assume it was successful. And that is how you save data in iCloud. Likewise, getting data out of iCloud is just as simple. So we'll devise a new method here. We're going to call it, it's a void method, we're going to call it populate UI, perhaps. And same as before. Grab a reference. And now we're going to put values from iCloud back into our UI. So we're going to call the object for key method on the Cloud Store, which will hopefully return the NS string that we've saved into it before. And the same with the date. The date. Uh -huh. No need to synchronize anything, it just comes out if it's there. Now the if it's there is an interesting one. So we need to subscribe to a notification which can call this method in case data in iCloud has changed so that our UI actually updates. I say we do this in our view to load class, but you're more than welcome to do this in your app delegate or in any other part of your app. I'm going to call it observe iCloud changes. And here's how we do that. Add observer self, that's us, selector populate UI and the name, that's a really really long name, so thank god for code completion here. NS ubiquitous key value store did change externally notification. As long as you type NS ubiq it should come up with a massive list. I just picked this one here, it's an NS string constant. An object we don't need so we can pass nil and that completes the method and that is our observer set up. So as soon as that notification comes in our popular UI method should be called and set those values on our UI. It's the moment of truth, let's see if our app works. First of all, I'm going to launch it on the simulator, just to check if the UI is working. There we go, we can type something in here, we can also return and the keyboard goes away, just what we want. There's one thing, uh, no matter if it's the simulator or your real device, if you go into settings and you look for iCloud, you must of course make sure that you are actually signed into an iCloud account to test this. So uh, as of iOS 7 the simulator does support some iCloud features, not all of them, and we'll see if they work. And we'll say OK to that as well. There. If you already have an iCloud account here which you would like to replace with something you use for testing, just head down to the bottom and say delete account. I know it's a bit of a scary message but it doesn't mean delete your iCloud account for good, it just means remove it from the device. I think they could have worded that perhaps a little bit more appropriate here. So anyway, if we run this on the simulator, I'll say something such as hello from simulator and return and this is today's date, perhaps I will put January the 1st, just so that we know it's definitely a different day. Save data to iCloud. We'll see if my other devices pick it up. So up here I've got two devices connected, one is an iPod Touch 5th generation. Let me run that on there. And another one is my iPhone 5S and I'm also going to run that on there. I will just minimize Xcode here so these are all the devices. In case you're wondering, this is done with an app called Reflector and I'm using the mirroring option so this allows me to display all my live devices on the screen. So let's start with the iPhone which is on this side. Uh, looks like this message has not filtered across. Let's put something in here. 
So hello from iPhone, and uh, maybe I will give it the 13th of February. Oh, there we go. As soon as I did that, this has now picked up what we put in in the simulator. Nothing so far happened here, but as I said, the simulator is a little bit reluctant to work at times. Well, let's pick something else here. The 1st of November. See if anyone else is picking it up. Well, there we go. It looks like that iPod Touch had it. Let me try that again from the iPhone and see if we see it changing here to hello from iPhone again. I guess not, I'm not entirely sure why, but it's one of those things. Oh, there we go, iPhone's picked this up. Simulator's still not quite there yet, hasn't quite picked it up. So the reverse works as well. Say 1st of February on the phone. Let's see if the eye, yeah, there we go. It works both ways. So let's go to December. That worked, and the other way around. If I change something to August on my iPod, August works as well. As you can see, the simulator does not seem to pick this up. But the simulator can send something. So it looks like he can certainly you can certainly send data into iCloud and both live devices pick it up, but it looks like the other way around, it doesn't work. Yeah, iPod picks up the iPhone, but the simulator doesn't pick up any changes. Okay, so that was iCloud key value storage. Next, we're going to move on to iCloud document storage.